You're listening to Podcateers. Welcome to episode 388 of Podcateers. This week we talk about Destination D23 and some of the announcements that came from the event. The panels and presentations were streamed on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, but if you didn't have an opportunity to watch it, head on over to the blog post for this episode at podcateers.com 388 to watch them. We don't know how long those videos will remain available, so hopefully with the holiday weekend coming up, you have an opportunity to hang out and watch them. Remember that you can join the conversation and discuss some of those announcements on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just search for Podcateers, but we'd like to invite you to join our growing community over on Discord. You can find an invite to join in the blog post for this episode. Once again, you'll find that at podcateers.com slash 388. Before we jump into the episode, we want to say that we are super thankful for a very special group of people known as the FGP Squad, our podcast fairy godparents, because it's their support via Patreon that help make these episodes of Podcateers possible. As part of the FGP Squad family, you get some additional perks like exclusive discount codes for Podcateers gear, additional content like the Podcateers after show, and access to our monthly happy hour calls, just to name a few. For more information on how you can become part of the FGP Squad family, we invite you to check out podcateers.com slash FGP. And as always, a super special thank you goes out to the FGP Squad for their continued support. So it's time to jump into the episode, but before we do, I just want to say that I'm thankful really for all of you. I know that we're super thankful for the FGP Squad and their support, but we're thankful for all of you because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you listening. So thank you. We hope that you have a great holiday weekend. If you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving and you just are going to hang out and maybe have a Friendsgiving or hate just a Thursday, we hope that you have a great day anyway. Either way, again, we're super thankful that you've chosen to hang out with us. If you're new to the podcast, we hope you like what you hear and we hope that you come back for more. And for all of you that have been hanging with us for some time, we appreciate all of you. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's time to start the show. So here we go. Here is episode 388 of Podcateers. Yo! <laughs> Nailed it! Yay! <laughs> hey now! The dream is over, and I hate now. <laughs> Anybody That's... that understands that reference and that song takes you back. Mine was a different hey now, but that's okay. Which hey now were you thinking about? <laughs> mine's uh, mine's uh, Larry Sanders' hey now. Okay. All right. Hey now, I I watched all of the Larry Still? Sanchez show recently, so. <laughs> oh you know, yeah, you're an all star. I was thinking that too. <laughs> Game on, go play. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Lots of hey nows. Wow. Well, did you know that all hey that now, glitters is gold? Hey now, this is what dreams. Oh. Are. Oh. <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> wow. Nice one. <laughs> Nice. We could sit here all night and just this think of now Hey Now hey content. This is the Hey Now <laughs> podcast, the Hey Now episode yeah. of Podcateers. Uh, well, how you all doing today? Good. Good. It's it's yeah. a day. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a day to uh, I don't know, go. <laughs> it's, it's a day. <laughs> it, it's a day to decompress all the news from the past week. I guess. There has been so much this week. It's like a Thanksgiving fest. Yeah. Oh, a little bit, right? It's a cornucopia, if you will. There you yeah. go. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. News. Yeah. If you are listening to this on release day, Thanksgiving is the day right after we release this episode. So yeah. if you celebrate, happy Thanksgiving. If you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but you do the family thing, happy Thursday and happy eating day. Whatever you want to call it, but happy yeah. day to you all. Mm. Yeah, it's been so full of news the last week that mm-hmm. I felt we're going to need a 26-hour episode to talk about all of it. I'll right. put on the coffee right now. <laughs> How do we we'll... compress it down to an hour, hour and a half-ish 
thankfully we got together before the episode and we kind of hit some of the major bullet points and we realized that uh, the majority of our listeners are Disneyland visitors. You know, we do have uh, some listeners and fans that listen on the East Coast. Some tend to frequent Walt Disney World more than Disneyland. But our home park and the park that uh, the majority of our listeners tend to frequent is Disneyland. So we will talk about some of the news that happened at Walt Disney World because this weekend was uh, Destination D23. And for those unfamiliar, that is the East Coast version of the D23 Expo. It is held on alternating years. So you'll have D Destination D23, and then you'll have D23 Expo, Destination D23, and alternating coasts, alternating years. And, I mean, there was tons of news uh, the day. And this was really cool, right? Because one of the things that we've talked about is whether or not going forward disney was going to offer some kind of opportunity for you to watch the panels from the comfort of your own home now they did open up the the expo there uh destination d23 it it was pretty full from what i could tell there was tons of people there there was tons of people posting on social media about being there uh it was basically a mini version of d23 it, we always wanted Disney to have well not always this was something that we talked about especially when the pandemic started and thinking about how D23 was coming and everything we were wondering whether or not Disney was going to have some virtual uh, aspect of it and we did I don't know if they're going to do this for the D23 Expo but for two days they allowed us to view a lot of the panels that they had going on for Destination D23 uh, if you started watching of course it was on East Coast time Eastern Standard Time, three hours ahead of us. So you would have had to start watching at 6 o'clock in the morning, Pacific Standard Time. And it ran approximately until about 5 p.m. on that day. And there was tons of stuff, including announcements from Josh DeMauro, which is how everything got started. Uh, There was presentations from Cirque du Soleil and the creators, things about the Galactic Cruiser or the Star Cruiser, Uh, More entertainment that's coming to Disney World, uh, a celebration of the 80s at Walt Disney World, uh, all sorts of stuff. And honestly, it really is a lot of content for us to try to focus on and talk about in just a single episode. Uh, So we're going to try to hit some of the main points. We're going to try to hit some of the stuff, especially that happened at Disneyland. But before we get into that, I do want to talk a little bit about uh this this flood that happened at it's a small world at disneyland because we kind of joked about it in the last episode right we're talking about how Mm -hmm. a a very high up disney exec decided to say hey you might be making the water come out of the attraction just by sitting in the boat uh that was not the case but the attraction did flood Now, there are several reports about what happened, what may be happening, and how long the attraction might be closed for. Uh, As far as we can tell, some of the information that's been put out there, it looks like when they started to refill the attraction after the overlay change for uh, the Christmas overlay, uh, there was a leak in the in in the actual structure that holds the water where the boats are and uh that leak basically got bigger and bigger they caught it several hours later it ended up flooding the attraction the basement uh several other areas and disney hasn't officially put out word about how bad the damage is but uh, there are some internal reports. Again, take this with a grain of salt because, you know, Disney might be holding off on giving official word because they might still be evaluating the situation and they might be trying to figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to take care of it. But uh, word from people that are close to the situation, cast members uh, have stated that uh, it looks like it may have damaged some of the electrical Uh, Mm -hmm. some of the electrical components that have been down there since the 1960s. And if that's the case, it looks like the attraction might be down for a lot longer than was anticipated. I I don't know if any of you remember, but something very similar happened to World of Color several years ago 
which ended up causing World of Color to be closed for almost a year. So if that's the case here, it's unfortunate that it happened on the day, basically, that they were reopening it for Merriest Nights, you know, kicking off the holiday season at Disneyland. Uh, it's it's sad, right? I mean, I don't know how many It's a Small World fans are, are going to be crying over it, but I don't know. I feel like It's a Small World, the, the holiday version, has become a bit of a staple for a lot of people during the season. I was sad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, that was the one thing I wanted to go on. We went back, uh, what opening weekend? I want to mm-hmm. say for all the holidays, and then we learned the day of that. No, it's closed, and it was just oh, so sad. It was really sad, but um, but to know of like the extent, the damage, or the reports of what we're hearing. That stings to know that it could have possibly ruined things that happened, you know, decades ago. I really hope it could come back. And I hope, you know, if it's not soon, fine. As long as it's maintained, as long as it's okay and nothing else is ruined. Yeah. So I'll wait another year. (laughs) You know, if it takes if it takes like, you know, let's say three months to get it back up. They should just open it up. It's a small world holiday anyway. Yeah. And just holiday in, you know, March or whatever. Just run it the rest of the year. Because uh, let's be honest, it's a small world holiday is the best version of it's a small world. It's a small world. It's <laughs> it's, it's adorable. The be- it's the superior <laughs> version. I love it's a small world, but it's a small world holiday is my favorite. It's like the sleeper hit of the season. It's the best. I love it's a small world holiday. And the the facade you can't beat with all the lights and everything. It's mm-hmm. yeah, that's what that's what I was gonna mention, Andrew. Thank goodness that the outside facade still is working. Because if that was down, I think we'd be really s- saying a different story here about how yeah. sad that part of the park would look right now. Speaking of news that came out in the last week, right, which we talked about last week, they're revamping the other part over there past that is the uh, Toontown. But uh, other than Small World, you really don't have anything to go that direction right now because the Fantasy Fair theaters close as well. So it's like that's something that ride I do look forward to during hol- time, holiday time. Me and my wife have plenty of pictures from the past of being in front of that front facade of the lights, which is cool. But, yeah, the indoor displays and the music. Look, I get tired of hearing the um, Asylum it's a small world after all version of, you know, <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> so when it switches up for the Christmas time, it's a welcome change. So uh, I I will be with you, Hayes, and hearing the reports now after, like we were saying, we got there the first time we were kind of joking around about, oh, I wonder how long it's going to be, who, you know, who messed this one up. But when I hear electrical and the way Disney right now, I don't know how much they're doing with their facilities and staffing those positions they're it sounds like they're gonna have to do an outside contractor to get that back up and running and when you do that that takes a contract to be you know taken care of and that's just alone takes time to find out the right person that could do a job if it's over a decade old it might be updated need to be updated yeah one of the things that concerns me is how much of this will affect the toontown reimagining right mm-hmm. because I, I mean i i don't think many people know i think listeners of our podcasts are pretty savvy and they know that there's levels in the parks right like it's a small world is not ground level there is a basement to the attraction there is like storage area for the shop that's right next right next to the exit of it's a small world so a lot of these attractions have like an under area where a lot of the mechanics are where a lot of the electrical and all that stuff is maintained basement yeah it's a basement area And so if the water went from the first level where the attraction is into the basement, damaged that, how much of that was part of Toontown? How much of that will it affect the reimagining of that area? And how much will it, you know, prevent them from doing there? Hopefully not much. Um, You know, it's a small world. Thankfully, like you said, the facade is doing okay as far as we know. But with an attraction like this, I would assume that on top of the fact that they also have to be careful with the electrical, they have to make sure that, you know, everything is functioning. 
this is a really old area with cracks on the floor where water could get in. The foundation could be damaged. They have to make sure that mold doesn't begin to develop in those areas where the water went through. So, you know, when you think about the time frame of an attraction like this reopening, it really isn't going to be a one or two month job. Like you are looking at months to ensure that when they reopen the attraction, it's safe to do so for the guests that are going to be, you know, boarding the attraction. So whether it takes a year, whether it takes a year and a half, as long as it's opened again, you know, because it's a small world, you may not like the song, you may not like the attraction, but the historic value that it's a small world, you know, and how meaningful it is to the park, ranging all the way back to the World's Fair and the design that Rolly and Mary Blair worked on. And, I mean, there's so much significance, you know, to the attraction, to the park, the connection to Walt, the connection to all those original Imagineers. You know, it's something that you definitely don't want to lose. And I'm sure that Disney knows that. They understand that they're going to do everything that they can in order to save it. So is it going to suck not having the attraction for a while? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure that some people will be happy. Like you said, the song won't be there. But uh, as long as they can save the attraction, I think it'll be fine. Right. Ultimately. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So hopefully... You know, whoever's working on that, hopefully they can they can get that settled, get it get it functioning. That'll be great. A uh, couple questions. I know you guys recently went back to the park. You know, you, like you mentioned, Mel, you were there for the kickoff of the holiday season. Uh, how were the crowds? Because from what I've been seeing in on social media, it looks like the parks are back to capacity. Actually, we were all there, but I want to say it was pretty busy. There were some times where I was actually surprised that, like, Indy was only, like, 40 minutes hmm. at a time. But everyone came out for fireworks. That's where you knew. All right. These people, they've... Mm. All right. Small World <laughs> Mall is filled. Filled to capacity. I mean, thankfully, we were in a spot where it was not like that at all. Hmm. But... um. Yeah, overall, I want to say a lot of the attractions had a long wait. <laughs> but um, I want to say, gosh, there wasn't... This is how I, I kind of put it as. There wasn't a long line for the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't too So it wasn't bad, bad then. No. It was, it was like Winnie the Pooh had like a 15-minute wait. Um, yeah. Yeah. Smuggler's Run had like a like a thirty forty, depending on the time of day. Like we we lucked out and kind of hit, ended up hitting stuff at a, at the right time for most of it, but some of it was just you know horrendous. You know Spider Man because that's now has a standby queue was just over eighty minutes the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, racers the same thing. Um, the tip the typical ones you know. Um, yeah. But it was it was. Yeah, I think there was just a lot of people there trying to experience the the holiday offering since it was the first weekend. So it was like the walkways are pretty crowded and and stuff like that. And then like Mansion Holiday and stuff like that was still very popular but um manageable, I guess. So it was it was a little rough and mobile ordering was kind of weird was being a little weird that day. Melissa did a lot of mobile ordering. Oh, I sure did. I, I, don't talk to me about waistline. <laughs> I'm, I ate everything. <laughs> what, was, um, what was the best thing you ate of the new offerings? Ooh, that's a good question. You know what? The beignets, the peppermint beignets. Those were good. They were. Interesting. Melissa Especially with the some. chocolate dip. Good. Those were good. <laughs> What's the pink churro that they have right now? I don't know. Pink churro. Oh, it's a coconut. It. Oh, is that what, is that the coconut one? Yeah, it it's a coconut one. I forgot what it's mixed with, but it, it has coconut. pink. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I mean, I'll eat it. It's just pink is not a color I associate with coconut. We had a, like, what did they, it was a, um, it was like Thanksgiving churro or something. I don't remember exactly, but it was like a. Uh, oh no, I don't remember what it was. It was on Main Street, and it had like, like cinnamon and like 
holiday flavors or whatever, allspice or something. I don't know. Oh, it's pretty good. It came with like a it came with like a like a vanilla frosting dip. Oh, pineapple um, coconut churro. I had to look it up. Huh. And it's pink just because. Probably because of the holidays. Yeah. Miss yeah. Piggy. I think that's what they're going for. The Miss Piggy churro. The Miss Piggy <laughs> churro. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's is that the there's a green one too. That's the Kermit oh, maybe churro. It's the there same you go. one that I'm thinking about. I don't know. All I know is that there's a handful of treats that I really want to try. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, we were looking for a date to go. And every time that a date comes up, it's always on a day where we can't take off time from work. And <clears throat> I've had to work a couple of weekend days th- these last couple of weekends. So has my wife. And so we're not. Like we haven't been able to find time to actually schedule in. When we go in, there's nothing available. We constantly check. There's something available, but it's on a day that we can't go, and it's just ugh, ah. So we do have finally a reservation, but it's not until January seventh at this point. Nice. That's been the first one that we've actually been able to nail down, and I mean it's fine because I think we're just like on the like on the tail end of the holiday season, so we're gonna get like like second to last day or something like that. So we're still going to be able to experience the holiday season, which is great. But yeah, trying to get any day in December has just been an absolute nightmare. It is. <laughs> it has not it been is. easy at all. I went back oh. last Friday, so I got lucky. Um, that was like a one of those one-offs I got real in. And to, to give a little dynamic to what Melissa, I was with Andrew and Melissa the first time too, and they're absolutely right. The weekend impact is something you will see. And I think right now, what was interesting about that, we're still November. It's not December quite yet, mm-hmm. like you're mentioning, Hazen. That's the major holiday season. So we would, I would see, I would see that changing. One thing that I did notice, though, um, the festival, the food offerings. I think that's really for once making an impact on how the park's attendance flow is. See, like Melissa mentioned, when we were there, everybody was packed in for the fireworks, but there was a good middle part where people were going over to DCA for the festival food, the booths, like you're mentioning, Hazen. And I feel like that's a continuing trend because when I went on Friday, it was after work, about 6 o'clock I got in there, ease of getting in was easily there was nothing too bad because everyone was probably there before in the day and leaving or just getting there you know the lighter crowd still though in dca getting through the walkways is a little tough specifically in the area where the food booths are at for the festival um and for me they have some type of i haven't got yet a chance to try it but they i look super sweet it looks kind of like a toaster's trudel but want to be a concha it's oh, this bread. Okay. <laughs> it has a ton of layers of like uh, that sweet bread that you get like from Mexican panderia. Mm-hmm. But inside it has like a strawberry filling. Um, I don't oh, know the exact man. name of it. I, I, I keep forgetting what it's called. I Wait, know we if mentioned it's, if it. It's, is it like a little round one? Like two it's little like, round ones? No, I think I think it's like just like maybe it is round. I, don't, I just know it's like pink and red. Yeah, and yeah, it has yeah. It like a white line. It's got yeah. like coconut shreds on it. Oh, yeah, I think that might be it. That's the only one. And other than that, there's something uh, that they just introduced. That's a part of the festival food offerings, holiday food offerings, but it's not a booth. It's uh, the paradise area where you would see, like, cocoa and that. They have another thing there that's, like, a uh, tres leches, pineapple, small little pastry that they have there, too. That's the two things I want to try. But other than that... I would think, yeah, going the time you're going, probably a key time if you want to knock out some food because this will still be there, I'm, I'm thinking. And I do wonder how the flow of people, crowds are going to be with that festival. Because, you know, and one thing we want to see too was, you know, it was probably one of my favorite things. And I don't ever forget about it, but it does hit me in the spot is seeing the Viva Navidad show again. That was, yeah. ah, man, that was just bring up, like you talk about a nostalgic moment just sitting there, I was watching everybody watch it for a minute, and I'm not going to lie, I, I just totally got like a little emotional because it was just this, that pure joy again because that show has so much energy. And to see the cast members coming out from the back, getting ready to get into the show, and it's like, yeah, that was a cool offering again where I thought that was really cool. So I could see the crowds kind of 
moving over to DCA at that time. That's what I wonder how that's going to work at Flow. But fireworks, you best believe they might shift back over to Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah, the the bridge that you're talking about are actually one of my favorite, you know, that oh. you can get at a panaderia. They go by different names. I think depending on where you buy them, uh, you know, they go by different names. But one of the more common names is they're called in Spanish. They're called kisses. They're called besos. Oh, okay. And it's basically like it, it's two, like you said, it's two tiny conchas with like jam and there's like smashed together like a sandwich and they're yeah. normally either rolled around in sugar or in coconut shavings. Yep. And I mean, ah oh man. Ah. Delightful. <laughs> Delightful. That's what I've been waiting on. That's yeah. the one I'm going for. I mean, honestly, I would just find a panaderia and just go get some because <laughs> yeah. I mean they're just delightful on their own. You don't even have to wait for anything Disney to go get that. But yeah, they go by different names. Like in some areas they're called yo-yos, in some places they're called besos, in some places uh, they're called ojos de buey or something like that. Like it, it just depends on where you buy them. And in Hazen's house, they're called delicious. Yes, they are called <laughs> delicious. <laughs> that is how I refer to them. I refer to them as gone in my presence. No. <laughs> Mine. They don't make it to the house. They're gone in the car. <laughs> yeah. I would say that when I go to get pan dulce, that's one of the first things I try to get for myself. And then if I go get just like traditional donuts at like any donut place, uh, I like to get the... Uh, the buttermilk ones, the ones that look like a rock, not the little circle buttermilk ones, but like the, the like they're not the old fashioned ones, but the old fashioned buttermilk, they just look like a big rock that's glazed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is basically a block of sugar, but damn it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care. Uh, cool. So, yeah, holidays, totally in high gear at Disneyland. So if you're going to be going anytime soon, expect to see some crowds. It looks like Disneyland is... Uh, the Disneyland Resort is allowing more people to get into the park at this point. So uh, people are enjoying their time while they can, especially considering that, uh, you know, I, I don't know if, how it's affecting attendance, but I know that here some of the Magic Keys are no longer available. At Walt Disney World, they recently stopped allowing certain uh, passes to be sold as well. They have put a halt on that because of the crowds. Um, but you know, it's expected. It is the holiday season and a lot of people want to go. It is the favorite time of year for a lot of people, including, you know, us or some of us rather, <clears throat> you know, I know Halloween is sacred. I like know, it too. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, uh, you know, <laughs> so yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that happened at destination D because there are going to be some changes coming to the Disneyland resort. But before we do, I do want to remind you that this episode of Podcateers is brought to you by a fantastic group of people known as the FGP Squad, or as we like to call them, our podcast, Fairy Godparents, because it's their support via Patreon that help make these episodes possible. If you want more information on how you can become part of the FGP Squad family, you can head on over to podcateers.com slash FGP. There you will find some of our top contributors. You'll also find a link to our Patreon, some information about the FGP Squad. And uh, you can always hit us up with a message. You can join our Discord and ask us there. But being a part of the FGP Squad does get you some additional perks. You get uh, exclusive access to a special section of the Discord server. You get uh, discount codes on Podcateers gear, access to new items before anybody else, access to the Podcateers after show, and more. So, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And, of course, to all of the members of the FGP Squad, we just want to send a huge thank you for your continued support. Uh, Destination D23. Uh, presented by Tops. Pre- presented by Tops, exactly. That caught me off for a spin. Tops, yeah. for those not familiar, um, I mean, if if you've ever collected any type of card, especially baseball, uh, yeah, they got burned are... in the 90s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Just kidding. laughs> Tops was the one of the major manufacturers of those playing cards. They went on to do deals with like Garbage Pail Kids and Dinosaurs Attack and Mech Warrior and all sorts of stuff. But they also owned Bazooka Joe. 
And uh, Tops back in 2007 was acquired by the Tamante Company, and the Tamante Company happens to be owned by Dun Dun Dun. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. I'm Eisner. That's right, Michael <laughs> Eisner. <laughs> The connection continues. Hello. And it's funny, right? <laughs> because there's tons of people. Like, Michael Eisner is such an interesting dude, man. I I feel like we need to dedicate a couple of episodes to talk about Michael Eisner do and his he, career. Do because he, no, just there's like. No, <laughs> I have a lot of opinions on Michael Eisner. Well, okay. a lot of people do. You know, yeah. like, Michael Eisner is like. At the time that he was running the company, right? Like, he is single handedly, well, not single handedly, but he mm. played a major role in saving the Disney company while simultaneously almost ruining it completely. So, there's this crazy yin and yang about Michael Eisner that I think is really interesting. And so, some people really love him, some people really hate him. The thing about him, though, is that uh, Michael Eisner was really huge on Imagineering, you know, and I think Imagineering was able to do a lot of the things that they wanted to do because Michael Eisner was like, do it, let's go, let's use your imagination, run wild. And, you know, that doesn't always happen. And when there's people or when there are entities running Imagineering that, yeah, you know, tend to not believe in that imagination part, and they're more dun, concerned dun, with making dun, money. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names, but you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, long story short, Tops owned by Michael Eisner, basically. So again, there was a lot of really great presentations. Just to kind of break down uh, the day that they had, they they started off the day with Josh Demaro. They had a presentation essentially called Connections, a look at the future of Disney parks, experiences, and products panel. Very similar to the parks panel that they have at D23. They talk a lot about some of the changes that have already happened, some of the changes that are going to be happening in the future. They talked about like the Tron uh, roller coaster coming to Epcot, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the presentation after was called Weird Disney World. This was something that they've done before where they dig into history and they talk about some of like the craziest Disney World moments. After that, they had like a trivia challenge. They did something. They did a presentation that was actually hosted by Brett Iwin and some of the Imagineers called Planes, Trains, and Monorails. Walt Disney World on the Move presented by Enterprise, you know, the rent-a-car company. Uh, they had a segment called Walt's, Walt 70s World, and it was a lot about pop culture in the 70s at Walt Disney World uh, with a couple of former ambassadors. Uh, that afternoon, they also did something called Drawn to Life, where they talked about Cirque du Soleil and the creation of the show that, that's coming uh, to Walt Disney World. Um they had a uh, world building for Star Wars Galactic Cruiser, where they talked about that was hosted by Ashley Eckstein. They talked about the hotel, the food, the costumes, uh, pretty much everything that's gone into the creation of the Galactic Star Cruiser. They did um, a presentation called Magical Entertainment for the Walt Disney World 50th Anniversary Celebration. Uh, that was hosted by the Walt Disney World ambassadors, uh, some people from Disney Creative, and they looked at you know some of the new experiences created for the Magical Celebration. Uh, some of the stuff we've already known about. It's a lot of the things that they've been announcing, some of the new shows and stuff. Uh, then they had another trivia challenge. Uh, after that, they did the art and imagery of Walt Disney World, and that was, um, I think, Peggy Ferris um, and other Imagineers were, were the ones hosting that one. Uh, then they did uh, another decade. They did Walt's 80s, and that one, I think, was also Ashley Eckstein and Brett Iwen, and then Park Stars of Walt Disney World. And they talked about like Figman, Orange Bird, um, you know, a, a lot of the, the the popular characters that you tend to know from Walt Disney World. Uh, and after, if you were at the event, 
you had something called the magical musical world of Encanto and you just kind of celebrated with the music and a show. One really cool thing was that if you attended in person, you actually had the opportunity to screen the entire film before anybody else. So oh. it was wow. one of the coolest perks that I think you got with a ticket for Destination D23 this time around. Yeah. Uh, that was Saturday. On Sunday, it, they kicked it off with something called Disney Plus Download. I, I'm not exactly sure what that was, but it looks like they just kind of talked about the streaming service and some of the shows and what's coming up and some of the changes coming up. Uh, then they talked about the Disney Wish uh, it was a presentation called Creativity and Inspiration Set Sail. Uh, so they talked to Imagineers about what inspired the cruise line, the stories, and the spaces that they built and all of that as part of, um, you know, all the next generation of the ships that are coming to the fleet. Uh, then they did another trivia challenge. They did something called Dawn of the Disney World. Uh, that was uh, Stephen Vagnini. Uh, he did the presentation. He's the author of the book, uh, A Portrait of Walt Disney World, 50 Years of the Most Magical Place on Earth. He was joined by the inaugural Disney World ambassador, um, George Caligridis, uh, the, the, um, the president, president of, of Walt, of Disney, Walt World. Disney World. Then they did like a session on the Walt Disney archives. Uh, then after that, they had a break couple of other presentations called delicious disney 50 years of walt disney world hey you see the theme almost every presentation said something about 50 years at walt disney world like that was the mm -hmm. theme like everything was the 50 years obviously because they're why. celebrating the anniversary of <laughs> oh, walt disney world. Oh, there it is right uh they did another thing mm -hmm. called from the vault merchandise memories of walt disney world i think andrew i think you would have gotten such a kick out of this presentation because there was a lot of merch talk like a lot i saw some i saw some pictures and stuff from that yeah that looked pretty good because it was like they had it like broken down through decades yes and stuff from yeah, yeah it yeah, was yeah, pretty yeah. cool to see some of that stuff uh they had something called stories of the walt disney world galleries uh, Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge again. Then they did The Next Decade, Walt's 90s World. They did Musical Attractions of Walt Disney World. And then they had a fantastic finale. Uh, they just did, like, Di Capella came out and they did some singing and all sorts of stuff, which was kind of cool. And then after that, they had a Disney Plus party for people that attended in person. And it was called Season Streaming's Ugly Sweater Party. So you were able to just kind of hang out and be part of this ugly sweater thing that they did. But tons of stuff to do. Two-day event. A lot of... I'm not sure if they're going to be placing any of the presentations online anywhere. They did stream it live on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. And uh, I did get an opportunity to catch some of it. I was listening to most of it because I was I was working. I was doing other stuff at the time. Uh, as far as Disneyland is concerned, uh, a lot of the changes and a lot of the things that are coming is one. They started. They announced that some of the things that we're used to seeing in the parks are coming back next year. Yay! Yay! Some of those include yeah. Fantasmic. World of Color, those will be returning in 2022, and that parade is also coming back, the one with the old lights. So, yeah, that's coming back. That won't retire. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they could have said, yeah. look, we're bringing back Paint the Night, and instead they said Main Street Electric Parade, but whatever. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I know that there's... <laughs> I know that there's tons of people saying, what? What? How dare you? Well... Uh, it's a beloved classic. I know Hazen. it is. I know beloved it is. Beloved by all. I, everybody by all, must. By all, really? Like, everybody by all, loves mark? the Main Street Electrical Parade <laughs> presented by Sylvania or whoever they're but, presented by. This. But everybody. Everybody? Question mark? Everybody, according to them. It is a beloved classic. Oh, it's a beloved classic for a large group of people. No, is everybody. it by everyone? <laughs> no. No. Every, everybody. Look, if you're new to the podcast, 
I'm going to say something that in on many occasions has gotten me into some trouble because I think Main Street Electric Parade is just kind of whatever, right? I mean, it happened. It's over. I understand the people that have a huge connection to it. But, you know, I've told this story on the podcast before that I didn't grow up watching this parade. And so I don't have this, like, deep-rooted connection that other people have. I saw it a couple times at Disneyland. I saw it once at California Adventure on one of its 18,000 goodbye shows. And then Paint the Night debuted as like, Aah! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're into a we do this again. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that makes me cry. And that's how I feel, <laughs> right? And I know a lot of people mm-hmm. don't like that because they're all like, Main Street Electric Parade is the greatest thing since sliced bread. But you know what else is better than sliced bread? Sandwiches. Everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, I mean, maybe not everything else, but a lot of other stuff. And in that list of other stuff, is paint the night. <laughs> there's gotta, there's gotta be a reason that they are not bringing paint the night back. Like it just fell apart or something because it was such a great parade and they added, they, they right towards the end they added a float. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, here's an Incredibles two float. I'm like, okay, great, fantastic. Look, what you're saying honestly worries me because that is quite possible. Right? Maybe they're bringing it back because something isn't functioning. Disney Maybe World. it's falling apart. Who knows? Uh-uh. We don't know that. But the fact <laughs> that they're bringing back a parade that's already falling apart, you know, so many years ha- that it's been used, so many times that it's been retired. I mean, how many times have we said goodbye to that parade? How many people have bought those light bulbs? I know. <laughs> So many. Everybody let it, loves let it, let it my parade forever. Your parade is dry and tasteless. No, I'm <laughs> quoting the Golden Girls. How dare you. Knows. Look, <laughs> see those magical notes. Okay, those magical notes that launch the Paint the Night Parade. Those that make you feel inside, make you feel mm-hmm. all warm and fuzzy, makes you feel good. You feel pixie dust. You do feel pixie dust. <laughs> you do. Okay? From the moment you hear the bum, 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 blah, yeah. Right? <laughs> Everything. Okay? It's upbeat. It's snappy. It's vibrant. Disney it's World. Paint the Night. Mac is just beautiful. Everything just about Paint the Night is beautiful. Here. <laughs> Everything just about Paint the Night is beautiful. But you got, you know, the original, the Paint the Night's bass. What's the base of the music of Paint the Night? Baroque yeah, that's right. It's Thank Owl City for that. Mm-hmm. When can no, we do yeah, this again? <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> <laughs> they made nice. the Baroque hoedown. That's right. Owl City. Well, look. Look, I, I agree with you. I agree that they did base uh, a portion of the music for that parade on Baroque hoedown. But you know what else they did that for? Dream lights. Did we get dream lights here? No. Would I like to? Yes. Why? Because mm-hmm. it's far superior to MSCP. I mean, but <laughs> dream, dream lights. <laughs> Sorry. Dream lights is just paint the night. I mean, it's basically the same. No, it's not. Right? They are very no, different. It's not. They are very. They are very different. They are very they different. Have a genie one. They are vibrant and they are amazing in their own right. Would I like to see dream lights at Disneyland and paint the night at California Adventure? Heck yes. Are we going to? No, because they're bringing back Main Street Electrical Parade. Beloved classic. You know what, though? By all. Everybody (laughs) loves this parade. I'll just keep reiterating. This is what they're thinking. Everybody loves the Main Street Electrical Parade. There's the little bugs, and they make the commercial every time. They're loading them in the truck or driving them down the street, and they do the little shake. And they go. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear it in my voice, but I did a little shake when I did the shake. And we saw it and happen. And it's back. Yeah, we you did. saw it happen. So I, I get where you're coming from, though. I just got I'm a, just being I, a little stinker. I just got a message from my wife saying... MSCP is my jam. How dare you? How rude. Amen. No, <laughs> <laughs> preach, preach, preach. Lynette and I will go. We'll go see Major You guys Electric go. You know what, though? <laughs> like, I get it. You know, I think my wife was one of the people that had an opportunity to see that parade when she was young, and she has that connection. And I get it. I don't want to take that away from anybody, right? I, 
mm-hmm. I, I know I jest and I know it sounds like I'm being a jerk about it, but I understand the connection that people have with that parade. I just think that after retiring it for 2,700 times, let it retire. You know, let's move on. Let's let's move on to paint the night. Let's do something different. Uh, but let it enjoy its retirement. Yes, of let it go it to the Bahamas. To... <laughs> let it go to Cancun and enjoy its float self, like hanging out at like I don't know. Let it go to Castaway Key. You know, let it go to a Disney resort and let it retire there, <laughs> there and just enjoy its cruise. Aulani with the Ooh, Main Street Electrical Parade. <laughs> the Aulani <laughs> Electrical Parade. <laughs> they have to put sand joke. tires on it or something to go on the beach. But you know yeah. what? Or just put them on barges and it'll be like the electric water pageant. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. In the ocean. Yeah. Uh, anyway, long story long. Do I want Main Street Electrical Parade back? No. Do I understand why they're bringing it back? Absolutely. There's a nostalgia factor after the park has been closed for so long. There's a deep-rooted connection that's going to bring people back to the park as if the park wasn't enough to do that on its own, bringing back something that, like you said, Andrew, is beloved by all, obviously is going to Thank buy, you. is going to get people to buy tickets for the people that have magic keys and can't get in. It might even get them to purchase a ticket for the day. Because quite frankly, I have talked to my wife about doing that at one point where we don't, you know, use our passes that day, but we just buy a ticket to go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That way we at least get to enjoy the day. But it would be expensive if all four of us went and had to purchase tickets. So anyway, catch the Main Street Electrical Parade before it glows away forever the 14th time. (laughs) Uh, So. As part of that presentation, uh, I know we didn't mention this earlier, but uh, I I forgot to mention, and I need to mention that we saw the live demo of Project EXO. We talked about this back in episode 375. Imagineering had those like big feet and those big hands, and they were just kind of walking around, and we were talking about like what we would want to see. I was like, ah, Hulkbuster! And then everybody's like Thanos and like Harold and all sorts of characters, you know, Baymax, like would be really great characters to see with this type of technology. I really hope we get to see this sometime soon, especially on Avengers Campus. I think it'd be a really great place to uh, display it. Another big thing that's coming to Disneyland in 2022 Magic Band Plus. Yeah. And one of the big features about Magic Band Plus is the ability to say, hey, Disney, play Podcateers. Now, at this moment, that's not going <laughs> to do <not> anything. <laughs> okay? It, that right now is not going to do anything. But years <laughs> from now, when it's fully active and you're listening to this, one of your devices is going to start playing Podcateers. Why? Because that's just how the Disney app will work considering that it will integrate with Alexa and Amazon Echo devices, especially when you're staying on property. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you about this one because we've seen this huge push to use the Disneyland app with our phones, uh, Magic Bands. It looked for a time like they were phasing them out at Walt Disney World, and now all of a sudden, boom, getting them at Disneyland. Thoughts on this? Oh, I'm for it. I'm for it. I loved I loved using a magic band at uh, Florida because you didn't need your phone. You just went, boop, scan, boop, scan. That was it. So the reason they could have been just bringing them back is because, you know, no contact. And it was actually really, really, really easy to access, put money, do whatever you need to do. I'm excited. It's yay. We've been asked. I mean, I we well, I've been like wondering since then, since 2014, when we when would we ever see that over here? And hey, it's time. You know, it's cool. I I'm for it. I'm excited. If How they, much are they yeah. gonna be? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Between one and a hundred dollars, yeah, right? I know. somewhere in that. Come range. on down, <laughs> right? <laughs> there we but go. as long as they make it like work well, as 
I will definitely jump on the bandwagon. Like, I, I, I want it to be able to. Okay, my tickets on here. Boop. I don't have to pull out my phone. My payments on here. Boop. I don't have to pull out my phone. My discounts on here. I don't have to pay out my phone. I can just doop 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 put it on the thing, because you know, I probably won't be having genie plus or anything anytime soon so you know the fast pass part of it where when we used it in florida it you know had your fast passes on there you hold it up to the thing and it shows you how to fast pass Mm -hmm. if you don't have genie plus blah blah blah, it's not gonna work um but you know having your payment your your pass or ticket your discounts whatever your maybe your mobile order um something whatever i don't know but as long as all those things are integrated in with it that would make things a lot easier because of having you know you have to scan your your okay pull out my discount thing and photo pass maybe photo pass has a qr thing too where you just boop everything's boop 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 so that would be nice where you don't have to scan because i know a lot of those things they have an issue with the you know, they have to take out the phone and then you have to get it in the right light and scan the barcode or whatever when stuff with this NFC just works. So that's my hope for these. And I will definitely get one if if that's the promise, the hope and the reality. Andrew nailed it. I think we talked about this before about when they bring back the keys. I think we even made like a joke about 3D printing, getting a key onto like a physical pass. And I think if anything, this is one of those things where a lot of people were saying just a matter of, I wish I had an easier way to access the park by just scanning my way in. And the cast members probably are on the same page of being like, oh, the lighting, if we could speed up that part of them entering the park. And they said, well, let's see what happens about ad- adding the magic band to Disneyland. And just like Andrew said, there are so many conveniences you could find with this if you're already trained to use the Disneyland app, um, then I can't see the magic, or excuse me, magic band being like a big jump in technology. This will be a innovative step if the execution's right. Because I always felt like things at Disney World work seamlessly because they have an infrastructure of IT support and internet accessibility by Wi-Fi that's really efficient because they own the areas. Out here, there's a lot more of a difference. So I wonder about efficiency and updating and how good it will be on reliability. I mean, just let alone, I'm talking here, I'll I'll get probably a cheap magic band just to get inside the gate faster (laughs) because that's about it. So then you could just scan when you walk in and if the rare time I ever do get a fast pass. But if my one caveat is, I was hoping that they were going to develop the Disneyland app to be more compatible with smart smart wearables like Samsung's watches or Apple Watch. And then you have the NFC technology built into that, and it's a part of you already. That's something you're going to bring to the park if you have one of those watches or smart watches. So that's where I'm kind of bummed at. Yeah, that's definitely something that i thought was going to come before they even brought magic bands because i think it was actually even uh, something that we talked about maybe a year or two ago when they started you know talking about whether or not they were going to bring that tech here and when the disneyland app started to get more features we thought oh well this is the future for disneyland they're not even going to bother with magic bands Exactly. Honestly, I don't think they need magic bands at Disneyland. I understand that there's going to be a collector's aspect to it. Will I want one? Yeah. Will I get one? Yeah. But I don't think I'm going to use it because everything that you're going to need is going to be available within the app that you're already carrying on your phone. Right. And honestly, a magic band is far more limited than what you'll have available to you on your phone, because, yeah, will you be able to pay for meals? Sure. But how are you going to place that mobile order? You still need your phone. If you're going to get an attraction like FastPass or something, if you don't have Genie Plus, what are you going to need? Your phone. How are you going to make a reservation to get on Rise of the Resistance? You're going to need your phone. You're going to need the app to do that. So. Honestly, the Magic Band is going to be really limited. I think just having the technology here, unless, unless 
they end up expanding the magic band to have more functionality like that. How it will work, I don't know. Because, Larry, you make a great point that Wi-Fi at Disneyland is kind of spotty at best. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing like Walt Disney World because they have all of the the, infrastructure infrastructure for it. We don't have that here at Disneyland. So how will it work? I don't know. But if it's going to be the standard magic band that you just kind of swipe like you would an Apple Watch or a Samsung Watch or even swipe your phone to pay with Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, it's really just going to be for the luxury of saying that you have a magic band, right? Because it is going to be far more limited than the phone itself. Uh, Again, will it prevent me from buying one? Probably not, because it's going to be cool to have one, especially one that says Disneyland and not Walt Disney World or something, right? Will I get one, especially if there's a Haunted Mansion one? Heck yes, I will. (laughs) Will I use it? Probably not, because the functionality... Main Street Electrical Parade, Magic Band. No. (laughs) No. Paint the Night, yes. Beloved classic. No. No. That says that right on the side. So, yeah, I I mean, I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see how they integrate this. I think they're having a little bit of trouble just getting the hang of even doing reservations for things like Rise of the Resistance. There's a ton of problems with how they manage that now. And adding Genie Plus into the equation now that they're actually starting a standby line for things like Rise of the Resistance... It's going to be interesting to see how things evolve and how they're even going to work because there are going to be more growing pains as they begin to add these to the infrastructure of the park. I mean, I've I've thought about this for a couple of days as far as the announcement of Magic Bands, and I can't see a use case for Magic Bands that outside of like, like having a Magic Band like functionally, like why you would need one at Disneyland, unless they're going to add more functionality to it. Like if you own one, you get first dibs at a Rise of the Resistance, like reservation or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're staying on property, then yes, I think it will have tons more functionality because when you're in your room, you'll be able to get Alexa to do a lot of that stuff for you if they program it as one of the actions or what do they call it on on that device? Skills. Uh, A skill. Uh, So if it's a skill that they teach that works on property, then yeah, tons of functionality. But you're not going to be carrying that thing around with you in the park. Right? So... But I'll try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to have to ask yeah. a lot of people to plug that thing in, or that's going to be a massive battery pack you're going to be carrying along with you. <laughs> Don't you worry. And then I have to worry. But then I you know, just connect it to my hotspot on my phone. I've got it figured out. It'll be fine. I can imagine Andrew oh, carrying a big old backpack and a USB port with a like an echo Shh, just no hanging say over. The word. Don't say it. Don't say the word. Nobody. <laughs> oh, there she goes again. Uh, uh, hey, Alexa. Uh, play Podcateers. Uh, oh. <laughs> i'm sorry if it triggered that for anybody uh but that was fun uh yeah so uh if i mean i i'm interested to hear what everyone else thinks you know uh, you know magic bands definitely something that's been disney world based for a very very long time i think this would have been really great years ago here at disneyland especially before the app became such a big part of the Disneyland experience. Now it just kind of seems like, hey, give us 50 bucks for a magic band and we'll give you half of the functionality or less that you have available to you in the app. Maybe that's just me. Uh, But if you think there's a use case for it, I'd love to hear it. Join the conversation over on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. But we'd love to have you join our Discord server so we can continue the discussion there. Uh, And look, maybe there's people out there that have used the magic band and know that there's more functionality available that I'm that I'm not aware of. And if that's the case, I would love to learn more about it, because if that's the case, I'm going to feel better about investing in a magic band, not just for the collector's aspect of it, but actually getting a tool that I can use when I go to the park, man. There was so much more that I wanted to talk about, but we're already at the hour mark, and I know that if we start with other stuff, it's just going to turn into like another hour or two. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So I think this is a good place to end today's episode, 
and then we can continue talking about some of the other stuff you know later on but was there anything else that you guys wanted to comment on before we wrap up today well, yeah, if we're going to save stuff, there's lots of stuff, but if we're going to save stuff, I won't talk about it. Well, I know we're, I know we're going to save stuff, but I do want to mention when Josh Tomorrow did the demo for the new lightsaber. Oh, dude. Dude. It looks so good. But he always holds yeah. it so weird. <laughs> right? He holds it like a weird robot, like he's trying to hide <laughs> something. I don't know what he's doing. It's like just stands so still. And holds it like a weird statue. I don't you know, know how he holds it? I, I, he holds it like he's oh about my. to bat something with it. Like he's playing baseball. Yeah. yeah. Like he doesn't have a lightsaber Don't choke up too high on it. Don't, yeah. That would be the worst <laughs> batting stance. I don't know. Would it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the baseball player <laughs> would know. <Rack> three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like we, like we were saying. It's uh, it, They have one of these. Don't drop it. <laughs> you know. This is the one we have. They're not oh, ready yeah, like, yet. Yeah, the way they grab it, too, it's like clutching. That's why he's like clutching. He's like, okay, it. I'll do it once, and then I will hand it back to the person. <laughs> no. Here we go. I'm afraid to know how much one of those is going to cost if they're putting that much care into this prototype. <laughs> oh, you know what? One million dollars. Speaking of which, I know there's uh, a lot of people that actually do want lightsabers, and if you've ever wanted one from Doc and ours, at oh. Galaxy's Edge, if you haven't been able to get a reservation, uh, and if you haven't been able to, or you know, head to the park to get one, the lightsabers that you can get there are now available on shopdisney.com. Hashtag not sponsored, but you are able to get them. So if you're looking for a Christmas gift and you have a Star Wars fan in your life. That would be uh, a good way to get them a lightsaber. They are $200, just like they are in the park. You just don't get the whole experience about building it with the whole light show and everything that goes along with it. Uh, are they still customizable? Yes. Like they they, are yeah, the... you oh, can wow. customize them. Cool. As far as I could tell, uh, you could still customize them. But, uh, again, I think part of building the lightsaber was the whole experience that went along with it. If you don't care or you're okay with missing that and just want something as a gift, now there you go. The lightsabers are available now um, from Galaxy's Edge on ShopDisney.com. Um, that's it. I think it's time to wrap this episode up and go um, go figure out how many threats I'm going to get from talking smack about Main Street Electrical Parade. And that's just from my I'm wife. With you, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sit together in the bench. We'll go over there. <laughs> well, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. So until next time, keep dreaming, keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Bye. See ya. We're thankful for the FGP squad. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Gobble gobble. <laughs> Part of the Podcateers Network.